Hi, this is Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So in this video, we're going to take advantage of the uh, connection that we've made between my Simulink model and the motor that occurs through our Arduino blocks and our Arduino processor and all that kind of stuff. And, and we're going to essentially test the motor. And we're going to use that motor to come up with a really good model. All right. And so the way that I started this was, well, I built the model first. Right. And so I got a DC motor driving a mechanical shaft. The mechanical shaft's defined in terms of its inertia and its damping. It's a pretty straightforward Simulink model that you'll see right here. It represents that mechanical dynamics. And electrically, it's a little bit more interesting kind of how you assess things in terms of like stall torque and no load speed, but essentially those will be our key parameters defining the motor. And again, it's a dynamic model, you know, which shows by the differential equations being solved there. All right, so let's just go ahead and hit run. And I'll run it through the scope. Let me rerun it one more time. And the, basically what we're observing is an open loop test, as they say, uh, where I send in this voltage sequence into my simulation model. And this is the response and angle that we get. Okay. And so first of all, I've never seen a motor respond the way that we're seeing it right here. Okay. And, you know, that's kind of the point of where we're going with this this video and probably the next one as well, okay, is that whatever values I'm choosing for my shaft inertia and damping and stall torque and no load speed as they exist in my MATLAB workspace here, they are not correct, all right? And, and so anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially take this test as designed in this simulation, which is reflected mostly by that sequence of voltage that, uh, you know, kind of, you know, um, triggers the response. And we're going to use that. All right, so let's go into uh, kind of the model that we were left with at the end of the, the last video. All right, and we see it right here. All right, and uh, if you kind of drag this out like this and drag this out like this, and I'll just kind of keep that battery read inside the subsystem that we are now forming. All right. I'm going to create my hardware interface to the motor. All right. I'll call it DC motor HW interface. Okay. And I'm going to label these ports. And so we're sending voltage in. I'll just call that one V. And we're going to measure angle out. And we'll recall that we put in some effort to make sure that we express it in the units of degrees. And so I think that's always good to include. And I like doing it in the, the port names. Okay. And so that all looks pretty good. Now, the idea is that we're going to replace our step voltage with the test that we figured out in the, in the model we were just looking at, right? And that this sequence, I know it's at least 10 seconds. So I'm going to go to uh, the simulation page and set the timing to be a 12 second test now. So then make sure we capture it. But um, other ways, we'll kind of operate from this hardware page and we'll just kind of use the button that we've been using right there, monitor and tune. Right there. Okay. And what I want to do though, also in addition to this, is instead of just kind of keeping it in the scope, I want to capture the test. And so I'm going to go to my Simulink browser, syncs, and we're going to send it to the workspace. Okay, I'm going to call it my angle, right? And I'm going to keep things pretty, oops, move this. Called it my angle, that's going to be the variable name. And I'm going to keep it as simple as I possibly can. I'm going to send it directly to an array, and it will be a two-dimensional array. And I think that's what we need for that. And then uh, the other thing is I'm, I want to make sure I capture the time vector from this test. And you might say it's well, pretty easy. Yeah, it's 0 0.01 times 
you know the the, the time step number but I just find this is a convenient way to do it. So let's, let's do this. Let's go in here first and we'll change the name to my time. And then essentially let's create a clock. And so a pretty decent clock is a constant of one feeding a discrete integrator right there. And we'll just allow it to be sampled uh, or to be um, inherited, which I know to be 0 0.01. All right. So I think we're all set. And so I think we're ready. And so let's just try this out. All right. And so go to our hardware page and click monitor and tune. OK. So having just edited out about a minute of this video where it was compiling, I see that we reached the point where it's successfully built and it's about to move. And there it goes. You can see it moving already. Notice it's moving in both directions as our voltage pulses are being both positive as well as negative. All right. And so we captured that measurement right here. Everything looks pretty good. All right. And so let's see how we did with regard to uh, capturing that data in our MATLAB workspace. And so those two arrays are showing right here. And so I like to do this. I select my time first and I select my angle and I click on plot. And yep, it looks like we, we captured it pretty well. So anyways, in the next video, we will use this data and we will essentially run a, a, a feature called parameter estimation, which will ad adjust those parameters in our simulation model until we get the best fit from the the the, the measurement the, the test that we just did and, and the simulation.